name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Herb, could you lead us in the confession of sin, please? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim you praise. Gretchen, could you please lead us in the Vinite? Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 69. Surely, for your sake, have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you have fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind and your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. You draw near to me and redeem me, because my enemies deliver me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whisperings, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will great, be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. 
Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Suzanne, if you could please lead us in praying the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans. Should we con continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever, whoever has died, is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks Peter. be to God. <clears throat> A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted, so do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of my own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who's, who lose their life for my sake will find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
When we reach the prayer for the day this morning, there's a line in the collect that says, all of God's people have been set upon the sure foundation of God's loving kindness. Loving kindness, speaking of foundations, is a bedrock term in the Old Testament. The Hebrew word for loving kindness is hesed, really translated as a, a steadfast, enduring love of relationship. God's covenant with us and ours with each other. Steadfast, enduring love. Enduring. Weathering the extremes, the stresses, the strains, and rising to the occasion. This morning, we hear the reflection and prayer of Jeremiah, who fears he cannot hold on, given how people are ganging up on him for carrying God's word to them and mocking him. But when he fears he can't hold on, that's when he holds on to the faith that God will hold on to him. Steadfast enduring love. The psalm this morning could well be Jeremiah's soliloquy. If it were spoken, it would be quite Shakespearean. In verse 9, I have become a stranger to my own kindred. And then there's an asterisk, a pause. An alien to my mother's children. There's so much pathos in that line when you think about it. The speaker, the psalmist, it could be Jeremiah, maybe it could be you. The speaker feels the alienation from his own family. That's why he cannot say brothers and sisters. Rather, he is separated from the alien to my mother's children. What a strange way to express your connection. The stranger expressing his feeling of strangeness so that we can appreciate it. We could say the speaker is speaking to us, but actually the psalm is a song. So the singer is singing to us and wants us to join in, not just to listen to the words, but to try them on, to learn the music. And liturgically in worship, that is what the psalm is all about. These lyrics from the pen of King David of ancient Israel have been sung for 2,800 years. And the psalm, the psalm, serves the same purpose as it did 28 centuries ago. Each week now, in the Sunday Eucharist or daily in morning and evening prayer, the psalm poses the same question it always has. Is this the way I am feeling today? Yes, the use of the psalm in worship is not as a reading. The psalm is not a reading. It's a prayer. And that is why it is always sung or said as a self-searching prayer. Everyone in the congregation prays the psalm. And when you're in the church on a Sunday morning with the scripture insert, you're used to seeing that refrain listed at the heading of the psalm. Because it's music, that's why there's a refrain. The refrain since the ancient days is the sung, chanted introduction and closing to the psalm for the day. They're like parentheses. The refrain is set or sung at the beginning and also at the end because the refrain has set the mood and the tone or the tune. Answer me, O God, in your great mercy is the refrain on this song. What's the mood of the day? I need help, God. I've been calling on you. Please respond. And the tone, or if we're singing it, the tune, in our Episcopal tradition, we have something called simplified Anglican chant for congregations that don't have choirs to carry the day. It's a very 
simple way of singing the psalm. The other thing to note is that the way the psalm is presented to us, the midpoint of each line has an asterisk. That asterisk is for a breath. And whether you are singing or saying the psalm, punctuation is not regarded in praying the psalm. The only punctuation mark, if you will, is that asterisk. And it's there for a breath. Obviously, if you're singing, you need to draw in breath to sing the second half of the line. But it's also there to intentionally make the congregation stop and ponder, if only for the slightest moment. The psalm serves as a self-searching spiritual song. In verse 8, surely for your sake have I suffered reproach. And shame has covered my face. Is this the way I feel this morning? Do I feel like I've been reproached because I follow Christ? Not really, not today. And then verse 9. I have become a stranger to my own kindred and alien to my mother's children. Have I become a stranger to my family? No. But someone might say, my spouse has. She's never home. She's always working. I'm really worried about that. So you see the way in which the psalm is designed to touch a nerve. That's what the psalm does. King David and his school of composers created this whole hymn book of reflection filled with raw human emotion and also a way of seeking after and waiting for God while also being honest with myself about the people I love and the ones I cannot abide. The praying of the psalm helps us make the transition from everything that was going on before I entered the church for worship that day. Instead of, did I remember to lock the car? Or I got to go to stop and shop after church this morning. You engage with the lines of the psalm. And the reason the psalm has this tradition and history of being sung is because when you sing, you become more engaged. There's that line, those who sit at the gate murmur against me, verse 13. The asterisk again, those who sit at the gate murmur against me. If you keep on going and the drunkards make songs about me, just keep going and going and going. You don't spend any time saying, what is this all about? Those who sit at the gate in ancient Jerusalem are the beggars at the entrance gate to the city the indigent, the poor, those in need. They are the ones who usually are murmured against, who are talked about. You know, why don't they get a job? If I give them some money, they're just going to spend it on alcohol. But what's being said here is that the very ones who are usually murmured against are the ones who are murmuring against me. Are things going so poorly for me that my life has become the joke in a drinking song? There once was a man from Setauket. No, I don't feel I'm the object of scorn and ridicule. But verse 14, as for me, this is my prayer to you, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing hope. Again, there's the asterisk in every verse. Usually what comes after the asterisk is a different way of saying what came before it. So again, the reason for that pause, verse 15a. In your great mercy, O God. And then the second half, answer me with your unfailing help. God's great mercy is God's unfailing help. And the next verse, save me from the mire. The second half of the verse, rescue me from those who hate me. Who's the mud in my life? I can say nobody hates me. And maybe not directly, but perhaps there are people who worry you. 
who make you anxious by what they do or stand for. And verse 17, you feel like these worries, these situations are a torrent, a flood that could drown you or a pit you could fall into. What is that pit? Maybe it's aging or money worries or where will I live when I can't take care of myself? Which brings you back to praying those lyrics. Your love is kind. Great is your compassion. And then the refrain comes back at the end. Answer me, O oh God, in your loving mercy. And then in the context of your own life, your own faith, your own presence at worship, you start to feel in a better place to hear the good news. And when you're gathered in person, to celebrate the Holy Communion. Amen. Lord, could you please lead us in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brad, and if you could help with the prayers, including the Our Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suzanne, if you could please help with the suffrages. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray now for the sick and suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your servants. We pray especially today for Kathy Haran, who is having surgery this week, and for Herb Moniz and John McPherson, who continue to recover from surgery. For Mark Gaeta, for Ashley Hudson and Emerson, for Richard C. Almash, for Victoria, Victoria Ferry, for Shibo Gaglio, for Anna Kerr Good, for April Kerr Valentine. Kathy Clark and John Rag. Are there others? Josephine Orlando, Michael Kerr, Bonnie Cassidy. Lord, we ask that you give your power of healing to those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we pray the uh, prayer for mission, we, we pray today for the worldwide witness of the church, including the church in uh, Bangladesh. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which you offer before you for all members of your holy church, 
that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Are there any other intentions we should pray for today? Ask your prayers for the people of Church of the Messiah, the Episcopal Church in Central Islip had a devastating fire this past week and they've lost their church. We also pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our effort, to which Herb is leading to make our church accessible to all. The people of Russia and Ukraine. Suzanne, could you please lead us in the general thanksgiving, please? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by, not by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Herb, could you lead us in the prayer of Craig Christendom? Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.